Hey guys, Asian here again with another video guide. This dungeon is going to be Spindle Clutch 2. This one is a trickier dungeon to complete, but if you know the mechanics, it's not terribly difficult. Um, this is the first boss you'll face after you fight through the trash mobs. Uh, unfortunately, uh, my computer crashed during the recording, so I lost the first half. Um, this boss generally comes usually comes with a bunch of mobs, you see them dead over there um, before I disconnected. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of mechanics, he's just your typical uh, zombie fighter, so he has a frontal AoE cone attack and he has a heavy attack, that's the uh, AoE cone where he swipes you, then he has a heavy attack where he kind of jumps up and strikes you, all you gotta do is uh, block that. As usual, we'll be skipping past the boss fight once I explain the mechanics, and we'll be skipping past the trash mobs. Coming up here is the next fight. He will spawn where I'm putting down my Ash Circle. He is Blood Spawn. He is very commonly used as a DPS test um, before Homestead come out, came out. He's a typical Gargoyle, not that many mechanics. Uh, he's a heavy attack right there. You gotta block that. He'll run to the center or where he spawned and do a very large AoE smashing attack. You should block through it, but the healer can also heal through it as well. As he drops lower in health, the ground pound will get a little bit stronger and it will start knocking rocks out from the edges of the arena. So you're going to want to stay fairly close to the center and just tank the ground pound hits, blocking through it and the healer can heal through those hits. Do note, if you are standing on the outside edge when the rock falls start, it is a one hit kill. So you're going to want to avoid standing around the edges of the arena. This is the next boss, Praxin Duar. He doesn't actually start attacking you. You can safely stand here and just kind of goof around until you start attacking him. Um, he comes, this is an interesting boss, he comes in first three waves of mobs. This is the first one, just a couple of trash spider mobs. Uh, Reaper is tanking them quite well as a, as a Nightblade. Once you kill those, he summons this next mob, which um, is the Swarm Mother Nightmare, Giant Spider. Tank should pull the Giant Spider while the DPS focus down the trash adds. Um, if you have played Spindle Clutch 1, these are basically all the bosses from Spindle Clutch 1 all over again. The first wave goes down pretty quick. Um, all of these waves are time-based. If you do not kill the wave fast enough, then Proxim Duar will summon the next wave. So this is a quasi-DPS test. You need to burn these down, otherwise you'll be facing off against a lot of mobs all at once. Um, while this is happening, Proxim Duar, you can damage him, but he has about a 90% um, damage resistance, so you shouldn't even bother attacking him. Um, here you see we aren't attacking, and that's because Mr. Say and Mrs. Say have both lost connection, that's why they're just kind of standing there. As you can see there, it is time-based. The next wave of mobs did spawn. The tank's job in this fight specifically, uh, during the mobs, is to pull the large mobs, and the DPS need to focus down the trash adds. Uh, there's the fourth wave with the Whisper. So yeah, the tank needs to pull all the large mobs. So that would be your Swarm Mother, uh, Big Rabu, and the Widowmaker, and the Whisperer. You will need to pull those away from your DPS, kind of gather them all up with the trash mobs, and DPS need to AoE them down. As I said, this is a DPS test, so pretty soon the Proxen Duar will actually turn into the real boss. Oh, we wipe there. So I'm going to skip ahead to when they reconnect. And we're just waiting for the Sage to come back online so we can actually finish this boss with an actual healer. There we go. Skipping past this since I've already explained this. So as I said, these fights are time-based. The tank, once the Whisperer spawns, needs to keep an eye on Proxim Duar, where he's standing right there. You'll see there I am anticipating him changing over real soon. Go back, poke the boss since he need help. At some point he will turn into a ghost. 
That's his first attack, a kind of uh, wave attack. DPS and healer just need to stay aware of where they're standing. That red circle is a, his special attack. When he summons that on a person, you'll be momentarily stunned. You can't break out of that. Then you need to follow the circle around. Do not try to roll out of the circle. Don't try to touch. Nobody else should even try to get into the circle. Um, because if you touch the circle, whether it is you or a person outside of the circle, it's pretty much a one-shot kill. What it, the circle, if somebody does touch it, the circle will automatically disappear. So this is what you should do if you get hit by the circle. You just need to follow the circle around. It'll move around the field. You just need to stay within that circle. He does cast this weird rune ability. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but it doesn't seem to do that much damage, so you don't need to worry about it. And here you see uh, we almost wiped, but it managed to save us. So we're just going to go ahead and skip the rest of the fight. This fight is probably going to be the longest and most difficult fight in this dungeon compared to the rest of the bosses. So once you get past this boss, it's pretty much cakewalk from here. The main thing you got to worry about is burning down those waves of mobs before he transforms into his ghost form. If you do not manage to wipe out the mobs before he transforms, you DPS should uh, clear him as quickly as possible while the tank maintains aggression on the mob. Once you hit this group of trash, you will see a red circle. Don't worry about them right now, you can clear them safely. These flesh Atronax are the actual boss. They do not have any sort of special attack mechanics. They are their simple flesh Atronach, they have a heavy attack and then they have a frontal cleave. Tank can pretty much tank all three of them pretty safely, and the key here is to take them all out more or less around the same time. Uh, we're going to skip ahead to when we kill the first one to see, so you guys can see just what happens when you don't kill all three around the same time. So tank, try to keep aggro on all three of them, keep them grouped together so AoE can hit them all. You see here we're trying to burn down this last one, and we didn't get it in time. So you see, for every Flesh Atronach that gets killed, um, it adds on health to the surviving Flesh Atronachs. I believe it's 30% extra health. So if you kill two of them and you don't manage to burn the last one down, then he will heal up to about 55-60%. You gain a little bit of a damage buff, but uh, not that bad in the end. So you want to take them all out at the same time. Uh, use your AoEs, try to keep them grouped together. From here, it's another couple rounds of trash mobs until you get to your next boss. This next boss will come with some ads. You're going to need to want to take down those ads. There we go. It comes with four ads. You can't actually pull those ads um, without aggroing the boss. So you're going to have to fight the ads and the boss at the same time. Uh, I believe it's two archers and two melees that you have to fight against. The boss has a dragon banner, so he'll drop down a banner. Just gotta kite him away from the group. And at some point, he will transform into a red puddle right there and go after one person who has aggro on him, which should be the tank. Basically, what you're gonna do is just gonna run around in a circle. Uh, avoid stepping in the red and attack him when he pops up. It's pretty simple. We're just going to skip past the rest of this fight. Pretty straightforward. If he does happen to transform into a red circle and drop the banner, uh, you can kite around the banner. It's not that bad. Uh, the healer can heal the tank through it. Final boss is going to spawn right over there. Tank is going to drag him. Back here to the, the kind of where the ramp is where you first enter. Has a couple attacks. First attack, uh, you see there, he will put a red circle on the ground next to a random target. At some point, he will start leeching life out of the people on the crucifixes. The hard mode challenge is not to kill those people. He doesn't actually heal for a lot. You can probably burn him faster than he can heal. 
And that's the red circle, and that's his other attack where he will hit everybody in the party once, and then he will uh, do a drain life attack on a random person. There's a couple animations that you can use to predict the attack, uh, his attacks. When he raises his fist like that, that's when he's going to do his teleport strike on everybody. Uh, you could tank the damage or you can raise your block when he raises the fist. Um, I have only seen people with about 15,000 health get one-shotted. Uh, so if you have around 15,000, you're going to want to block. Other than that, you can probably tank the hit. When he does that, he's going to drain health. And when he draws his hand back, kind of like he's casting a, uh, if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z, a Kamehameha, like that, that's when he's going to spawn a red circle around somebody. And that's basically the fight. Not very difficult at all, just got to watch out for those animations. And now we're just going to skip through to the end. Like I said, he's not a very difficult fight. You can burn through the damage as he heals, or at least cancel it out. And here we go, the execute phase, and then he's down. And that's Spindle Clutch 2, very easy. Final boss is a lot simpler on this fight than it was in Spindle Clutch 1. This boss doesn't have a lot of, doesn't have any one-shot mechanics at all. So this is a nice dungeon to start off with. Um, if you have a little bit of experience with vet dungeons, it does uh, help you Keep aware of certain mechanics. The only tricky boss is again Duox and Pruar. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.